Hi, for those of you that just joined my channel, my name's Jan Silver. I'm 44 years old and I've been video logging my journey to a gastric bypass route on Y, which I had. Tomorrow is my two week post op. So I think I'm 13. I don't know how you work it out because you never count the day of surgery as day one, you count the day after. So all I know is as of tomorrow, Wednesday, it'll be two weeks since my surgery which I had at the Berkshire Independent and Dr. Ramos was my bariatric surgeon. And everything has gone tickety-boo. It's all A-OK. -okay. Um, and I'm feeling, as I said yesterday, pretty good. Today, I didn't think I had anything to talk about and I wasn't going to YouTube today, but actually, I think for those that haven't been through this or are thinking about going through it, I think it's quite important to... One, tell people exactly what I'm eating right now so that you kind of get a gist of, of what I'm consuming on a daily basis. And two, to tell you about the vitamins and the extra supplements that I'll have to take for the rest of my life if I want to stay as healthy as I can. So, so I'll tell you about my food intake first of all. You're meant to, from, from surgery, you're meant to only have a fluid, uh, liquid diet. Um, I'm presuming because they tight you know they've they've stapled tubes together like so and they don't want anything sharp and hard to to aggravate the inside when food goes down so it's all about the healing process and you know kind of training your body to eat again a bit like a baby where you go through liquids like and then you go to soft food mush and then you go to proper food and you know part of this journey the any gastric surgery is not a magic fix people you know this is this is actually hard work I have gone through surgery and I now I made that choice so I've now got no other choice than to stick to the diet if I want it to work so it's not magic by all means you know I have to stick to this rigid diet in, initially and then after that I've got to be sensible and listen to my body you know my pouch is a lot smaller than my stomach was for instance so I really need to learn to know when to stop eating when my body says I'm hungry because your brain and your tummy have obviously the receptors are, are slightly different if you feel hungry in your tummy you might not in your brain and vice versa so you know I think straight after surgery I had a difficulty with my brain telling me that I thought I wanted to eat when actually I don't and you know, I am finding myself this week, especially forcing myself to eat. I've just had, so my breakfast today, I've got up about an hour ago, had a shower and I have taken, I have two uh, supplements to take or vitamins or, well, actually one is Lanzaprazole. So these are an effervescent drink. I put it in a tiny amount. Not too great, but it's okay. It's got an orange flavour, so it's not as bad as I imagined. So I take one of those a day, and I believe that's to do with my... I, the Dr. Romul actually told me that Romus told me that was to protect my stomach and that I was only going to be on these for two weeks. But slight confusion because I'm reading so many other blog posts, and I think this is the same tablet that people have been told they might be on for life I, I don't know until I see my surgeon which is next week I won't know but he gave me two weeks worth of these and I take these twice a day mixed in with a bit of drink so in the morning I have one of those in a drink and I'm just finishing actually this one which I got the, do the surgeon told me beforehand and the doctors prescribed me which is a calcium supplement I think especially at this point where you're putting so little into your body, you you really are quite deficient in all sorts of things. So I'm prepared to do anything I need to. And these injections, as I've showed you before, I'm not doing very well with my stomach. It looks like a bloody dartboard, I tell you. And everybody's like, have you pinched it? Have you pushed it in? Yeah, my husband can do it perfectly. He does it so fast, I actually don't feel the needle going in. And then he pushes it in slow, and but hey, you know, he's not around all the time to do it. So these are the tins of power in sodium syringes. And these were basically just for two weeks, twice a day, um, post-surgery. So again, as of tomorrow, I think that's finished. So I'll be quite happy to not have to put that into my morning routine. However, I did actually sort out my, some of my pills upstairs this morning, and I've got to start taking... Uh, forcible which is a multivitamin and I've got some biotin for my hair and I've got some iron tablets from the doctors so they're three tablets that I will take daily for the rest of my life anyway 
or buy a tin is for my hair, so maybe not. But, you know, it just, it just reminds me that this is going to be an ongoing journey. It, it's not a quick fix. You know, I do have to remember, and I know people struggle to get their vitamins down them. This surgery is going to make me deficient and ill later on in life if I don't take control of that and take my multivitamins and supplements for the rest of my life. Every single day, I've got to force myself to do that. I also have to have B12, vitamin B12 injections every three months through the doctors. Um, and this is through, I think Dr. Ramos explained it, is through 40 years worth of research of this surgery and, you know, knowing that people get to that point 40 years down the line and they've got these these big deficiencies in them. So, I, like I said, I'm totally prepared and aware. I just wasn't sure that I'd stressed that enough that this, you know, it wasn't just a quick fix, have that, and then I'm, I am losing weight nicely, but, you know. So, food-wise, let's go, I'll go through yesterday, for instance. I had a... I had a Weetabix because to me I thought cutting a Weetabix, so I put a whole Weetabix in a bowl and I couldn't eat it, put it that way. So I'm probably eating half a Weetabix but you have to drown it in um, milk quite a lot so that it's very, very fluid rather than a thick substance. So I have that and I do have a little bit of, um, we call it fake sugar but I don't know what you call it. It's like a, it's a pretend sugar but it's a sweetener. So I have a tiny amount of that on it just to make it a, a nicer flavour. So that was my breakfast. I have a coffee beforehand, a normal size cup of coffee now, which is just instant. I don't have anything fancy. I just have normal either gold blend or, you know, something like that um, with milk. So breakfast then is a half a um, Weetabix or one scrambled egg like I had this morning. And then throughout the day, you don't feel like eating, but I'm kind of forcing myself. I knew I was going out about I suppose 12 yesterday, so about half 11 I thought I'd have a snack, which kind of turned into my lunch. And I had, I cut up some cucumber, cut off the rind, and I had some hummus with that. Um, how much, uh, perhaps I'll take pictures of it and put it on my Instagram so that you can see. It's really not a great deal compared to what I'm, I'm used to consuming. And then um, somebody else had mentioned that I could have the crackers which are kind of dissolvable. So I did go and buy some along with some Philadelphia light. So it's low fat um, garlic and chives. That was absolutely divine. The flavors of that were just, ah, oh, so lovely. So yeah, that was a good treat. So I, that was kind of, I suppose, hummus and cucumber and then a couple of crackers with um, Philadelphia cream cheese on. That was my lunch. Then in the afternoon, I did manage to have a half a banana and then for my tea, and you're drinking, you're trying to drink all the time. I'm trying to drink 500 mils of squash in the morning, 500 in the afternoon. If I can get any more than that, I'm really chuffed. But that's generally about my limit. Because you take a bit of a drink, and you, you do forget that you've had this surgery, and you can't take a mouthful of drink and swallow it. It hurts. It really does. Get to a point and you go, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. It only lasts for a few seconds, because then obviously it's fluid, and it's going to go down. But it's, you know, it's like, oof. So, in the afternoon, late afternoon, I'm forcing myself to have a cup of hot milk, which I, with the milk, I mix a tablespoon of milk powder, which adds to protein. Either milk powder or you can use the whey protein. So, I'm trying to add some protein to my diet because obviously I'm not eating proper meats or anything like that at the moment. So, I have that milk in the afternoon and, and still sipping another bottle of squash. And then in the evening for tea, I had um, one of those children's meals, which I think yesterday I had a chili con carne. So it had a bit of rice in it, but it's a toddler meal, so it's very small. I whiz it in the blender, add water to it, and it becomes a pureed mush. So that was actually quite nice, but I couldn't finish it all. And then in the evening, I'm then another 500 mils of squash, and I'm trying to drink that all the time. I'm not missing alcohol like I thought I would, but maybe that's because I'm still healing. Maybe, you know. I did have a tiny bit on Sunday with my roast dinner. I did have, um, I, I put the Prosecco out for the girls on the table and the wine, and I did pour myself maybe that much, but added soda to it. And the soda was quite odd. I don't think you should fizz, drink fizzy drinks with um, after a gastric bypass, but it was kind of funny to 
to experience, I guess. You know, you feel the bubbles completely as if they're this big, boom, 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 going down in your tummy, and then you need to belch. So, um, and I did try and squish it around in my mouth so I didn't have the bubbles and I didn't have the fizz feeling, but, you know. So, yeah, that's basically kind of what I'm consuming in the daytime. Um, but yesterday was my best day energy-wise. I felt so back to normal. It was unbelievable. And I just, I felt energetic and I went to my daughter's, I went shopping with my husband, you know, and shopping didn't tire me out, um, going to my daughter's and then I actually drove my car. So I, I'm back on the road and that just pleases me because I don't feel reliant on anybody else. And, you know, I think tomorrow was my day I could get back in the car, but you know, two days, I'm, I'm fine. And it was mainly about the seatbelt and the healing. So I, I'm two weeks, I'm two weeks post-op and... I think I'm okay. So, and I'm not seeing the surgeon anyway until next next week. So I've got another week of home healing before I go and explain everything. I do have one tiny little thing that's not 100% right. I told you I took all my dressings off yesterday or the day before. I have one just underneath my, here you go, you can see it here, which is slightly raised. And it's like there's a, maybe a stitch hasn't completely come out. Um, it's not sore unless I put my underwire bra on and then it rubbed on it. So I ended up having to cover it with a plaster so that it didn't rub. And I've decided while I'm home, I've got a silly bando bra, which really doesn't do anything for my girls, but hey, um, it's just a little bit more support and it's not rubbing because there's no wire. So I figured while I'm home, I'll leave it open. But if I have to go out and put my bra on properly, I will cover it again with a little plaster until I get home. I intend to go up to Thatcham Town today and have a little walk around and actually get a little bit of exercise. I only mean slowly. And just walking around the town, in and out the shops, I have a few little errands to run in the town. It's a very small town, but I feel like doing that. You know, I feel like getting out a bit. I'm going to have a lazy morning and let my breakfast go down and then I shall head up to town and do what I've got to do. So anyway, there was me thinking I had nothing to talk about and I've just rambled for 12 minutes. Um, yeah, I quite like this YouTube. Anyway, if you haven't already, click like and subscribe. Thank you to everybody that has already and thank you for watching. I hope everybody's really well. Take care.